Good evening and welcome to another episode of Off the Print. Today with me in discussion is ruling party parliamentarian and state minister of fisheries, Kanchana Vijay Sekara, and head of training center for investigative reporting and former Reuters senior correspondent, Shihar Anis. Minister Shihar, thank you so much for joining me on the program. Minister, I'm going to start off with you. Um, right now, as we sit in the Daily Mirror editorial, outside the cost of living is soaring. People are finding it very difficult to even get through their days and have three basic meals. Uh, where is the government going wrong? What's happening? Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, inviting me uh, to your program this evening. Um, uh, it is a challenging time, there is no doubt about that. But it, it's not just a problem that Sri Lanka is facing right now. It is a global phenomenon and with the uh, pandemic situation, we have seen even the, the more powerful, the more uh, economically sound uh, developed countries going through the same thing. Um, and I'm not trying to justify uh, the pandemic and the cost of living. But it, these are certain things that are out of the control of the government as well. Um, and it's very difficult for the consumers, it's very difficult for the public. Uh, we do understand that and the government is doing its best to try to uh, reduce the cost of living and to make sure the economy is stable. Um, and it is going to be a challenging task, uh, but uh, I'm sure with the, uh, with the proposals that we are going to bring in during the next budget, uh, it will give some relief to the consumers as well. Uh, but like I said before, it's not, the, it's, it's not just Sri Lanka that's facing this right now. We've seen even in Europe that uh, even globally, we've seen like 40% increase in consumer goods, uh, 40, maybe 60% increase in gas prices, uh, oil prices are going up daily and certain things are out of the control of the government as well. So f for those reasons, uh, it's been very difficult, very challenging uh, two years in office for the current government. Uh, but we hope, uh, with, uh, we hope with the vaccination program uh, rollout being conducted successfully uh, that we can open up the economy 100% uh, and we can, we can start trading into other countries and then we will see some sort of benefit coming in our way maybe in the next 3-4 months. But Minister, you do realise the public is angry. The public anger is mounting day by day. Just last week, we had uh, the president in instructing his cabinet saying, do not raise fuel prices. But then we had the LIOC this week, which, which increased the prices. Um, there seems to be no stability even where decisions are concerned. So uh, the, it's justifiable that the public is quite angry. Uh, no, now LIOC is not a government called, uh, controlled entity. Uh, it was uh, privately, it was placed with the private uh, and a corporation back in 2001. Mm -hmm. So the prices that LIOC increases is not something that the government can yeah. take a decision for. But of course, uh, Sipetco is a government-owned uh, uh, establishment. For the prices in that will be controlled, and it will make sure that uh, now, if you look at the last three months, when the last uh, fuel price. Uh, increase took place, a uh, barrel of oil was about $72. Now it has gone up to $96, so it keeps going up. Uh, even with that, the government is trying to find a way to uh, keep it uh, without increasing the prices. But you have to understand that uh, our revenues have not increased, mm -hmm. uh, our uh, costs have increased, and it's not just the last two years you have to consider. It, it's somewhat to do with the five-year policy that we have seen as well. Now, if you look at the central bank reports or any reports that have been published in Sri Lanka, you can see that uh, the cost, uh, especially our revenues, uh, have not increased by the margins that the cost have increased. Uh, we have seen in 2014, end of 2014, the central bank reports, um, I think I have the reports with me uh, this morning, yeah, 2014, uh, 2014, end of 2014, uh, uh, revenues were close to 1,195 billion Sri Lankan rupees, but it has only increased up to 1,890 billion rupees. So, mm -hmm. an increase of 700 million. Uh, then again, our uh, uh, expenses from 1,795 billion has increased to 2,915. 
So full uh, wa uh, 100 billion rupees has increased uh, in the last five years, whereas our income has not increased as such. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the numbers from the central bank's stats, you can see that 2017, 18, 19, if you look at the per capita income, for the first time in Sri Lankan history, we have gone backwards. 2018 and 19 were the first two years. Every year we've had an increase in per capita income, but the first two years that we saw the per capita income going backwards. Uh, revenue has not increased, cost have increased, per capita income has gone backwards, uh, our growth rate has been the lowest in the region. So these are problems that we inherited when we took over the government. And of course, the global pandemic made it a worse situation. But so Minister, there is no point uh, having a blame game by saying that you no, know, it is this not is a, what it is not a it is not a blame game. Because so when you are justifying we are something, more than one year into this government, actually two years into this government, and and we seem to be not having any relief. The public seem to be not no, having it, it, any it, relief. It is it is vital to understand where we come from. It's not blaming the previous government, but you have to take into consideration the economy that we inherited. Uh, if we inherited the economy that was in a better shape, of course, we would have faced the pandemic better, uh, would have cut down on certain other costs, uh, so income would have been there. But uh, the last 18 months or last two years, uh, we have seen that everyone has uh, lost their livelihoods. Most of them lost their income, uh, lost revenue. Uh, prices have gone up globally. So those are things that, that is out of the control of the government. Minister Shihar, we are just going to go in for a short break. We will be right back. Welcome back to Off the Print. Today with me in discussion is Minister Kanchan Vijay Sekara and former uh, Reuters correspondent in Sri Lanka, Shihar Anis. Shihar, uh, I remember in 2019 when you were uh, working with the Reuters organizations, you were one of the first journalists who had broken that President Gotabaya Rajapaksa is going to contest for the presidency. Um, how do you want two years into this government? Um, how do you assess? How have they performed? Well, uh, I think I'll start with what the, the minister said. Like, uh, I do agree with uh, there. There are few things that the government can't con control, right? Uh, for instance, world market prices. Uh, the issue here is they try to control with uh, 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 price controls for you know for certain times and then you know they realize that they can't control forever um, we have a issue with uh, as minister also said like you know this he said in his word like inherited from the previous government i think we have an issue with structural reforms right we are not ready to tell the people we have an issue we have this economic problem right we are not ready any government any successive government is not ready to pass the you know this burden to the people assuming that that will be you know uh, a, a bad decision for them to go to the next election or that will make them unpopular but uh, now now what we see is it's you know the covid plus the past failures of you know structural reforms have been basically uh, I think the people overall and uh, if you uh, carefully analyze like you know every government uh, you know uh, tries to uh, try has tried to increase the prices uh, or increase the revenue uh, uh, but there are resistance right every time you go to a certain uh, uh, goals there are resistance and uh, unfortunately uh, for uh, President Gotabe's uh, 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 tenure, you know, until I saw that October 1st, uh, you know, central bank, uh, this, uh, uh, there, there's a, there was a six month framework, I didn't see any kind of economic policy from framework, right? It's because I think the 2020 was a, uh, 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 a, a budget, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you know, you didn't have kind of a government there. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a uh, interim government, so you went for an interim budget, yes. and then to 2021 you could go for a full year budget, right? So I think the best uh, you know policy document will be the next budget, right? So we'll have to f uh, wait and see you know what he's going to bring on that. But what what we see is you know uh, the policy uh, 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 wrong policies plus 
postponed uh, decisions, yes. right? Uh, not only from this government. But these postponed decisions is costing the government quite heavily, isn't it, Shihan? It is. It because is. Because when you when you actually open up social media, a uh, minister, when you open up social media, the anger towards this government is just increasing day by day. Um, your explanations are justifiable, but why are the public not seeing this, Shihar? No, it's because I think they were not told, right? Now, for instance, like in the last Is it because the government is not conveying these decisions very clearly to the public? It's not only this government, Jamila. It's all, every government is like that. I mean, they think that, you know, it will, it will be solved. Like, you know, the, the oil prices for so far this year, as of last week, has gone up by 62.2%. Yes. Gas has gone up by 74.4 percent. Your, uh, your, uh, the the freight charges have gone gone up by 200 percent. Right now, these are facts. Now, with that, if you are importing something, of course your prices are going to be high. And on top of that, we don't have dollars, yes. unfortunately. Now, that's an issue. Uh, you know, that's a real issue here uh, because of we lost somewhat uh, all the tourism revenue. Yes. Uh, and also, uh, uh, somewhat there was uh, a, 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 a fall in our remittances, right? And I think uh, I always said it's when you have this uh, uh, kind of controlled uh, man control policies, like you know the price control did not work, it failed. Now they are controlling the dollar, right? At two hundred and three. Now if you go to the bank, there are three bands at a time. At, there was a time where you had these three bands, right? Central bank rate was like 200 rupees, yes. private bank rate was something like 220, black market rate was 240. Now this is similar to like what uh, Lebanon has now, right? Lebanon has three bands. Mm -hmm. Now when you have three bands, nobody wants to come and you know bring dollars here. Right? They all want to go to either black market or you know some this Havala or yes. deal system. Yes. They don't want to bring dollars, yes. right? Now that's why I feel like remittances have gone down, right? So that. And you know this uh, postponement, postponement of this you know real policy reforms yes. have been kind of causing real uh, you know issue for this government. Right, Minister, coming back to you, um, certain decisions what the government has taken, they have always been U-turns. In fact, this is now being mocked uh, by the people, saying the moment uh, the government uh, makes a decision today evening, there is a reversal tomorrow. Why cannot the government be consistent in their decisions? Well, certain decisions are not taken uh, as permanent decisions. So most of the decisions a government makes uh, regarding price control or maybe regarding imports, those are temporary reliefs. So gasset notification doesn't necessarily mean it's a permanent decision a government makes. Mm -hmm. uh, there are obviously gasset notifications issued maybe monthly, daily and throughout our history uh, we've seen so many gasset notifications issued but I don't think any other gasset notifications got that same publicity. Mm -hmm. So uh, probably that is also one downfall uh, for the government because uh, the, the, the amount of publicity that it gained in the last two years for gasset notifications because if you look at it properly, every month we uh, issue a gasset notifications on onions and price on onions and potatoes. So when the production is up, uh, we issue new gasset notifications. Mm -hmm. When the production is lower, we issue a new set of guidelines. The same things goes to the fisheries sector as well. So each okay. sector, gasset notifications are issued as temporary measures. Okay. So I think it got undue publicity uh, as a permanent solution. But it was not a permanent solution. Of, of course, when the president uh, started uh, his tenure uh, in November, we we actually uh, gave a lot of uh, relief to the to the public. Uh, because we didn't expect a pandemic in the next two years and taxes were brought down and I don't think even the public uh, required the pu taxes to be brought down immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, probably within the next two or three years if you had done that it would have been better. But we lost a lot of revenue in bringing down those taxes as well. But that's a relief that was given to the public. Uh, but of course we are working on a strict budget. Um, I don't think it will be handouts during a budget but it will be strictly policy decisions. Um, I'm not going to blame the last five years. It, it has been a continuous process. So each government that has been in power right. is responsible for the situation that we are in right now. Right. Okay. So that's what we need to recorrect. Uh, and I feel like uh, now 
in other countries, developed countries, uh, countries that come into power, they have a policy to continue with. But in Sri Lanka, policies change with governments and policies change with ministers. Even within a government, the policies changes with the minister who takes over. So that is the system that we need to change. We need to have a trade policy for the country. We need to have an economic policy for the country. We need to have agriculture policy. We need to have a fisheries policy. So if we can implement this during this challenging period, right. I'm sure we can look forward. Whoever comes into power, that is up to the public to decide. Okay. And we will hold uh, elections on time. Uh, so whoever the public decides to elect into power, we'll have a policy to follow in. Right. Uh, rather than going and starting at zero again, then you have a policy to follow. That's what we need to do right now. Minister Shihar Raghunas is going for a small break. We will be right back. Welcome back to Off the Print. Today with me in discussion is Minister Kanchan Vijay Sekaro, who is the State Minister of Fisheries and a ruling party parliamentarian and former Reuters correspondent Shiharanis. Shihar, before we went in for a break, uh, the minister was explaining about uh, how gazette notifications are issued, uh, but you know, there's too much of publicity which is given to it and then subsequently these are reversed uh, and the public is uh, mocking this. Uh, what can you say about this? Yeah, that's true because I think uh, uh, throughout the throughout the last uh, uh, two years, if you carefully analyze, uh, it was kind of you know, m you know, more expectation was given uh, by you know the election of uh, uh, President Rajapaksa, yes. President Kotabaya Rajapaksa, right? This expectation was something like uh, you know hundred or you know multiple times of how Sirisena, uh, President Sirisena was elected, right? So everybody thought, you know, there will be an overnight solution for, you know, all the issues, right? It's not, right? So whatever he did was uh, closely focused and people thought it's the right way. Uh, but uh, it did not work, right? Now, for instance, I would, you know, still I would say, uh, you know, still there, is, there are few policies that, uh, uh, you know, this government can uh, reverse, like something like fertilizer, right? Uh, they, they, they are, you know, it's a, it's a good policy, mm -hmm. but uh, you, you, you need to go to the grassroots level and see whether they can actually kind of implement uh, among the farmers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, end of the day, it's going, you know, farmers are going to say it's a very good policy or not, right? Uh, I mean, uh, instead of that, they could have say like, okay, the, pri the, the, the chemical fertilizers will be given at the price, at the imported price, and there would be any subsidy on the chemical fertilizer. But there'll be, you know, uh, uh, subsidy on uh, organic fertilizer. Mm -hmm. So people themselves will have, would have decided to, you know, move to yes. organic fertilizer. Right. Now it's, you know, things have gone worse, right? Uh, so I was there in, you know, some of the grassroots level, this agricultural village uh, last week. People have not started cultivation, and their complaint was, you know, we don't have fertilizer, right? Uh, and, and government is trying to give the fertilizer, the uh, organic fertilizer, but it has, they have not got that so far. Right. So, so there are some of the issues that uh, I think, uh, I, I don't know how, you know, who uh, advised this, but uh, it should have been deeply thought process. Yes. Uh, they could have done more on, you know, if you had kind of had uh, at least a, a 10 page policy uh, document saying that, okay, this is our plan. This is how we are going to do, rather than you know telling it overnight, right? Something like that. So, I think that kind of uh, you know decisions really kind of uh, you know weigh on this government. Right, uh, Minister Shihar does have a point. Uh, you know, decisions have to be thoroughly thought before it's conveyed out to the public. Another very important point which I want to raise with you is the statements, the bold statements which are coming out from some of your ruling party members. For example, uh, last uh, two weeks ago we had one of the ruling party members who said that uh, Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa is like, an, uh, is like an Aladdin and he is going to be presenting a magical budget. And then we had uh, Minister Bandula Gunavardhana who said that, you know, a common man can survive on a rupees 2,500 budget for a day. Uh, doesn't this look bad on the government's uh, part? Uh, let me first answer a few questions on this fertilizer issue. Now, I think we all agree, all the parties, uh, everyone in their manifestos uh, have actually mentioned about organic farming. Uh, because one of the things that key things that were brought up in the 2015 election was food safety, yeah. food security, 
uh, and people dying of cancer, people dying of kidney, chronic diseases, those sort of things were the things that were marketed during the 2015 election. And the uh, world right now is more concerned on food security, uh, going into sustainable agriculture, sustainable fisheries, those sort of things. And I think it's a good decision that the president took uh, on going into organic farming, but the way it was communicated probably had lapses. Uh, now, as a government, we have taken the responsibility to provide fertilizer when they are going to start their uh, process. So, fertilizer will be given to organic fertilizer will be given to the farmers. And also, if there is a loss of production, uh, which a lot of people are predicting, I don't know whether they are scientifically predicting that mm -hmm. or politically predicting that. Mm -hmm. So, if it is scientifically or any anyhow, if it is a loss in production and the government is going to compensate for that as well. But it will be a process, it will be a couple of years until we get the entire country into organic fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And it is a decision that the president took uh, for the benefit of the public uh, because we have seen uh, the number of cases uh, that people are suffering from um, cancers, suffering from chronic diseases or any other diseases that are not known are because of food security mm -hmm. uh, issues. So we do understand there are issues in communication uh, and it's, it's very difficult to work with when you have a public sector of 1.8 million strong public sector. Uh, because when you're used to a certain system, when you're used to a certain way, changing is not the Sri Lankan way of doing things. Yes. So we have seen that in our history. So it's very difficult to do that, but it's a challenge. So we have taken up the challenge. And of course, uh, there are um, different uh, coalition partners. Uh, when you have a two-thirds majority in parliament, when you have 153 members, there are 153 different opinions, but it doesn't necessarily mean it is the government's policy. Uh, people could convey something, but ultimately the government, the cabinet, uh, the government group gets together uh, implementing what's the policy that's better for the country. So, um, yeah, people could just say whatever it is that comes to their mouth in front of camera to please their voters. Um, that is that is generally done, not just in government politics, you can see that in opposition politics as well. So that has been happening throughout in Sri Lanka. Um, so, But it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that is the government policy being conveyed by everyone who comes and speaks in the media. So. Um, that's the important part I think you have to take from uh, all these uh, thoughts that have been mentioned. I think the biggest issue what we're having here is people, uh, even ruling party and po uh, opposition politicians when they come in front of the media, they just say anything and everything probably just to get the limelight, you know. Well, I'll, I'll, this is I'll costing, like this is costing the government. No, I'd like to add one more thing Jamila, now uh, there are so many people who speak in parliament about policies, about positive things. But how many of those things are picked up in the media is also another question. Because media will push to get that answer that will market their channel as well, market their news as well. So that could necessarily not mean the right thing, but the wrong things are being interpreted in the media. Maybe that's a good lesson for us as journalists as well. Minister Shihar, thank you so much for your time. Once again, it was a fantastic discussion. We will be back with a brand new episode of Off The Print again next Tuesday. Good night.